Exercise number two, we're now going to learn how to create the corridor for London Road and also how to assign template drops to the corridor. We'll also take a look at how to view the corridor in 2D and 3D and then we'll finish off by taking a look at the cross sections from the corridor in the 3D model. In the previous exercise, we attached our existing ground terrain. We also attached our geometry to our corridor DGN file. We needed these two pieces of information to create a corridor. So now we're going to actually create the corridor and we're going to be creating the corridor along this London Road alignment or London Road geometry. A London Road's a two lane road, 12 foot lanes, 8 foot shoulders and it's concrete pavement. So let's take a look at how we create the corridor. So to create the corridor we need to go up to the corridors tab, click on new corridor and the tool settings window will appear and what you want to do first is set the feature definition we're going to be using the feature definition called final and what the feature definition does for corridors is it basically controls the accuracy and the display settings of the corridor and the 3D model so we're going to select final and then once that happens it's going to be prompting us to locate the corridor baseline so we're going to come in here and select our geometry which is our London Road alignment and then now it's going to be asking us to locate the profile or reset for active profile so we're using the active profile it's assigned to the uh, geometry or the London Road alignment so we're just going to right click to accept that and then for the corridor name it's automatically going to key in London Road for us because it's just reading the alignment name which is called London Road so it's automatically populating the input field here now if you need to change the name you could just key it in and change the name but we're just going to use London Road. So we're going to left click to accept that and then once that happens a corridor boundary gets created along our alignment and then notice we have a heads up prompt attached to our cursor now asking us to select or browse for a template. Okay now let's talk briefly about what a template is. Okay a template is basically a typical section of your road so for this particular road we're going to be creating 12 foot lanes and 8 foot shoulders and it's concrete pavements so that's our typical section um, but the templates they have intelligence and they can behave dynamically they're not static so don't think of them as being just some kind of static typical they can actually move and they do have flexibility and each template is made up of points and components and they're stored in the external template library called an ITL file which we'll see here in a minute so right now what we want to do is actually browse to that template ITL file. So to do that we're going to press the Alt key on the keyboard and the down arrow and that will open up the pick template window for us. And what you're seeing here is a preview of one of the templates in the template ITL file. And the template ITL file you can see that we're using for this particular course is called civil templates imperial.itl and this is delivered with the uh, Bentley Open Roads Designer workspace and work set that we're using for this particular course. So what we want to do is we want to use a template that is concrete pavement and concrete shoulders. So to get the correct template, we want to navigate through our list here and we want to expand the list. We're going to click on the plus sign next to concrete pavement with concrete shoulders and we're going to click on the plus sign next to undivided and we're going to find two lanes here. So this is our two lane template with concrete pavement and concrete shoulders that we want to use. So this is our basically our typical section. Okay, so once we select the two lane template, we're going to click OK. It's going to adjust the uh, dialog box here. And we want to left click to accept that template. And then now we need to set the station range along our corridor or alignment that we want to drop this template. So we want to start from the beginning of the corridor, so I'm going to come down here and I'm going to lock this value in by pressing Alt on my keyboard to lock in the beginning station. And then I'm going to select or scroll all the way to the end. You can see how I can pick any spot I want along the corridor, but I want to lock into the end station, so I'm going to press Alt to lock into the end station. And then from here what we're going to do is we need to specify the interval along our corridor that we want to create this template drop. 
So by default, it's showing up at 25. I want to change that. I want to make that be 10. So I'm going to key in 10 here and left click to accept 10. And for start transition, we're not really going to be utilizing this right now. So we're just going to left click to accept 0. And for our stop transition, we're also going to left click to accept 0. The template drop will be assigned and the 3D model will be created. So in view number two over here, we now have a 3D model that has been produced from the corridor. So notice here is our pavement, here's our shoulders, here's our ditches and our grading along our corridor. And then over here in the 2D model view, we have some additional graphics which I want to point out. Um, what happens is the 3D model view over here, this 3D model gets attached by default to the 2D model. So sometimes you may want to turn that off. So I'm going to turn that off just for clarity purposes. So I'm going to go up into the attach tools here and go into references. I'm going to locate my corridor London Road 3D model. I want to turn that off, turn the display off. And then I'm going to close the references dialog box. I want to talk about the 2D view here a little bit and what's going on because some additional graphics um, appeared. So the first one I want to take a look at is you're going to notice that there is a red shape with some handles here. And this is referred to as the corridor object boundary. And it has properties assigned to it that can be adjusted that pertain to the corridor. So if I select one of these corridor handles or if I select the corridor shape itself, that'll give me access to the uh, context sensitive menu. And we have some other corridor related tools here. So I want to take a look at the properties real quick. And in the properties you can see what feature name or the corridor name we use. So this is called London Road. The feature definition was called Final. The alignment name that we use was London Road. And then use active profile set to true because we use the active profile that was associated to horizontal alignment. If for some reason you wanted to use a different profile in the active profile, we can we do have the option to toggle that to false and then choose a different profile name here. Another thing I like to show is the template drop boundary. You may notice this purple looking dash shape here that represents the template drop boundary of the template drop. So if I select that and hover my cursor over that for a few seconds once again. You'll notice the context sensitive menu will come up giving you access to some other template tools. And I want to take a look at the properties tool. And in the properties tool here we can adjust the interval, we can select a different template if needed, and we can also adjust the starting and stopping stations of the template drop. You can also use the uh, grab handle arrow here to adjust the starting and stopping stations of the template drop as well. And in addition to the corridor object and the template drop boundary displayed in 2D, you'll see additional linear features such as like the edge of pavement and edge of shoulder and the, some of these ditch lines that are created. It's all part of the corridor creation process and these are just the linear features that are created automatically in the 2D and the 3D view. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.